Kyle Busch has come close to winning the Daytona 500 on several occasions, including a runner-up finish in 2019. He joked last year that he won the Daytona 499. This year, the Richard Childress Racing driver had a wild up-and-down day at the 2.5-mile Super Speedway that included multiple trips through the field, but ultimately ended with a 12th place finish. A week after Daytona, the two-time champion visited with reporters at Atlanta before Sunday's Cup race and talked about the season-opening race and strategy employed by the teams. And, as fans have grown accustomed to over the years, Rowdy didn't sugarcoat what was on his mind. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin were teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing for 15 years. The elder Hamlin has always spoken about how much he appreciated racing with and respected Busch because his former teammate pushed him to get better. Interestingly, at the Daytona 500, if there's anyone who is the mentor, it's Hamlin, with three Harley J. Earl trophies to his credit. Although, in the last three runs of the Great American Race in the next-gen car, the JGR driver's level of success has noticeably declined, his best result a 17th place finish in 2023. This year was no different. The 43-year-old started 8th and had a solid first stage, maintaining that position and scoring a 7th place result. He dropped back in Stage 2, but made his way back forward in the 3rd and final stage. Unfortunately, the number 11 car was eventually caught up in the big one on lap 9, and his damaged car managed to record a 19th place result. This past week on his Actions Detrimental podcast, Hamlin detailed his race and brought up one topic in particular that was discussed during the broadcast. Drivers not running full throttle to save fuel. Got on the radio to Chris. I'm like, this sucks. Like, I want to race. I want to race. I want to battle. I want to shoot through the middle. I want to go to the bottom. and But I couldn't because the field's jammed up. Everyone's trying to just save gas because that's the type of racing that we have now. Fuel strategy at super speedways? It's a bizarre scenario and one, as Hamlin said, no one likes from the drivers to their crews to the fans in the stands, because it takes away from the competition or the core ingredient of the sport that makes it so entertaining. This week, during his appearance on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, NASCAR Vice President of Competition Elton Sawyer was asked about the situation. The former driver explained how the sport has evolved through the years and why saving fuel has even become a strategy and more importantly, what the governing body is going to do about it. You know, just over time, you know, 76 years of, of NASCAR racing and, and our race teams are just so good and our teams are so good and our drivers are so good and the strategy and the preparation that goes into these events, they, they don't leave any stones unturned. And in, in the Daytona 500 or super speedway racing in general, uh, it's kind of come down to that. And, and basically what you're trying to do is spend – the least amount of time on pit road uh, that you can. So you're, you're getting through those stoppages, whether it be stage one or two, uh, you're getting the opportunity to, to gain some track position. So uh, it is something that we're looking into. Uh, ultimately, we want to you know, drop the green flag on the race, and they're racing as hard as they can until we uh, drop the checkered flag. And uh, there's some strategy in, the, in between there, and, and we will definitely take a, a much deeper dive um, at this um, in this particular situation and, and in the strategy that goes into it. On Saturday, Kyle Busch visited with the media in Atlanta. Since his move to RCR last year, the 38-year-old driver has taken on a dramatically different persona. That's most evident by the fan reaction he receives during driver introductions when the driver who was consistently the most booed on a weekly basis for years is now heartily cheered. Bush noted last year at Texas how he's happy to assume this new role where he's liked more than disliked and has enjoyed watching Denny Hamlin take on his former role, wearing the black hat and playing the villain. However, just because the fan perception of Bush has changed, that certainly doesn't mean he doesn't have opinions, and more specifically, that he's not willing to share them. 
If there's one thing Bush has been known for throughout his career, it's saying what's on his mind. So, as you can imagine, when asked about his thoughts on the racing and fuel strategy used in last week's Daytona 500, Rowdy didn't mince words. I believe it's a problem. The start of the race last week for the Daytona 500, we're all sitting around there running half throttle, not passing, just riding in a line. And I felt disgraceful myself being a race car driver, wanting to go fast and lead laps and, and win the Daytona 500. And that was our strategy that we had to employ at the start of the race because everybody was doing it. I mean, the pace, when you're running wide open and you're in a draft, your pace is probably a 46.30. We were running 49.80s, almost 50 second lap times. I was, it was pathetic. I was like, how slow are we going to go? You know? And so I felt bad for the fans. I was like, this is, this is not good for them. Uh, it's not what I wanted to be doing. Um, but when you kind of get in that situation, you can't, I don't know what you do. I, the third lane could have developed. It was so early in the race. Nobody wants to develop a third lane. Like we're riding. It's a 500 mile race. Don't, don't blow everything up in the first stage. Right? So, but somebody could have just pulled out into the outside lane and literally just ran to the front and done whatever the hell, heck they wanted to do. So uh, I was surprised nobody did that. Disgraceful, pathetic, powerful words by Bush to describe the situation. He also talked about feeling bad for the fans. Who had Kyle Bush, man of the people, on their bingo card? Based on what Sawyer said earlier in the week, NASCAR will be addressing the concerns of Bush Hamlin and the other drivers in the future. What that looks like isn't exactly clear at this point. However, whatever officials eventually decide on as the solution, you can be sure if it doesn't live up to the expectations of Bush, he'll be sure and let everyone know about it. The more things change, the more they stay the same.